Did you know that improving the air circulation in your grow tent or grow room can greatly improve your chance of success when growing your plants? Join me today as I explain why ventilation is so important and I show you how to install an inline duct fan for a spider farmer grow tent. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and understanding the importance of good air circulation, I know that I need to install some type of ventilation in my grow tent. Now, I ordered the Spider Farmer SF1000 grow tent kit, and as part of the kit, I have an inline fan, I have a charcoal filter, I have necessary duct work, clamps, and straps to hang everything. To understand why you need good air circulation and ventilation in a grow tent or in an enclosed grow room, it's important to understand how plants grow. With the process of photosynthesis, the plants are absorbing carbon dioxide out of the air. And as a byproduct of that process, they're releasing oxygen into the air. Normally it's not something we think about when we're growing outside because there's lots of air and the circulation is just naturally present. But in a grow tent in particular, we can get an imbalance pretty quickly. The plants are absorbing the carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen and before you know it, you have excess oxygen and not enough carbon dioxide for the plants to grow that's where the ventilation comes in. We need to continually add carbon dioxide into the growing environment and continually allowing the oxygen to escape. That doesn't mean that we need to buy canisters of carbon dioxide and pump it into our grow tent, though some very large growers do exactly that. For those of us growing at home, we just need to circulate the air. We need to get the bad air out and the good air in. Another important factor of why we want to ventilate has to deal with the humidity that can build up in an enclosed space like a grow tent. The way the plant grows is to take moisture from the soil and then it flows up through the plant, through the stem to the leaves. And then when it gets to the leaves, it escapes as water vapor. That process is called transpiration. Well, that water vapor can build up over time if it's not allowed to escape, and it can become very humid in a space like this. A high humidity environment is ideal for mold and fungus and potential diseases to begin growing, and there are a lot of pests that like an environment like that as well. So to control humidity, you need to have good ventilation. Along those same lines, the temperature inside an enclosed space can rise pretty quickly and get pretty hot. The lights, even LED lights, will generate heat. Well, if the air is just staying around those hot lights, it's going to get hotter and the temperature can rise dramatically. For most of the plants that we would be growing in a space like this, we're looking for the temperature range to be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's well below that or well above that, the plants just won't do well at all. And above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, particularly approaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll have flowers fall off. And pollination is not going to happen if you're trying to grow flowers in a grow tent. So get the air circulating, get some of that heat escaping and cool air coming in and you'll be able to keep your temperature under control. There are a couple of other factors to consider as well when deciding to ventilate a grow tent or a grow room. Many of the plants that we're growing can benefit from the movement of the air. Peppers and tomatoes in particular will self-pollinate. They just need a little jostle of the flowers to release the pollen. 
Well, if the air is actively moving inside a grow tent like this, that's often enough to ensure that you have pollination of the flowers. And if you're growing something in a tent like this that has a pretty strong aroma, well, having a ventilation system with a charcoal filter on it can really help to eliminate some of those smells so that you can grow what you want to grow without the entire room having that particular aroma. Knowing that we want to ventilate our grow tent, now let's take a look at the individual components and figure out how we're going to do it. I'm looking to create a passive ventilation system where with the help of a fan, the air comes in one of these holes and escapes through another one of these holes. There are four basic ways to install the inline fan and the carbon filter to get a system like that. The first being that we connect the filter and the fan together and put both of them inside the tent. What will happen is the air will be drawn in through the filter and then exhausted from the fan through to the side of the grow tent. Separately, we can put just the fan on the inside and the charcoal filter on the outside. This time, the fan will be sucking in the air and then blowing it out into the filter that's on the outside. This is one of those systems if you have the aromas and you don't want them to escape into the room. We can also reverse that process and put the filter on the inside and put the fan on the outside. This time, the air is being sucked in through the filter and exhausted by the fan that's on the outside of the tent. You might want to use a system like this if you've got the structure to hold the fan on the outside. And then the fourth option is to go ahead and connect these two together and have both on the outside of the tent. And then you'll use the duct work as the primary flow of air. So the open end of the duct will be inside the tent, flow through the side, and then flow into the filter and the fan. When deciding which of these methods you're going to use when ventilating your space, there are some important factors to consider. The first being the support of the fan and or the filter. Can you physically support these on the outside of the tent? Most of the setups you're going to see have these hanging on the inside of the tent. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like because they come with straps and they're designed to be hung from the support poles that are inside the grow tent. Another factor is how strong your fan is and how much air you need to move. Begin by figuring out the volume of your space, the length times the width times the height. So in this case, I have two and a quarter feet by two and a quarter feet by five and a quarter feet. That means the volume inside my grow tent is just over 26 and a half cubic feet of air. Ideally, you want to have complete replacement of that air every three minutes. So I need a fan that can move 26 and a half cubic feet of air in the space of three minutes. Well, this four inch inline fan from Spider Farmer can actually move 205 cubic feet per minute. So this is more than strong enough for a small tent like this. If you're looking to ventilate a larger space, especially a grow room, you need to take into account the volume and the strength of the fan. Other factors in deciding which method to use also take into account the strength of the fan and how you design your setup. If you're using the duct work, according to the Spider Farmer website, for every 90 degree turn, you need to increase your cubic foot per minute airflow calculation by 20%. And if you're using a carbon filter, it needs to increase by 25%. For the heat dissipation, you need to add 10% for each 1000 watts of the light size. Before you begin installation, before you start hanging things, 
it's a good idea to see if your fan actually works. It may have been damaged in shipment. So I've gone ahead and plugged this in. Now I'm going to turn it on. There is a symbol that tells me which direction the airflow should be going. And I can hear it start to wind up. This side is definitely the intake. This side is definitely the output. And this fan is going in full mode right now. It does come with a control and I can adjust how strong the flow happens to be. And so if a strong fan like this is more than enough for a small space, I don't have to run it in full mode all the time. I can adjust it for a more appropriate speed setting. The easiest setup is to install the fan so it vents directly to the outside. It's supported by the straps to the structure of the grow tent, as is the filter that is connected on the other side. There's no need for venting. The air will be drawn through the filter and out with the pump's help. But I'm not going to set my system up that way. First off, I'm only planning on growing vegetables in this grow tent in the foreseeable future. And the vegetables that I'll be growing really don't have an aroma or a fragrance that I'm that worried about. So there really is little need for me to use the charcoal filter. I'll save it for the future when I might be growing plants that I'm more concerned about the smell. So right now, the system is as simple as you can get. The fan goes directly from the inside to the outside with no filter and no ducting. But this isn't going to be the way I set up my system either, because I'm planning on growing tomato plants in here. Maybe an indeterminate plant that's going to grow pretty tall. The height of that plant will begin to interfere with the fan that's hanging from the top. And that fan also limits how I can adjust the light that I'm using for the plants inside. So for me, I'm moving the fan to the outside of the grow tent. And so using one of the clamps that was supplied with the kit, I attached the duct work to the inline duct fan. And the base is designed perfectly to sit nice and level on my concrete floor. The other end is supported by one of the straps, and so the duct will pull the air from the inside of the grow tent, and the fan will be pulling that air out. So you can see how using one of those four basic methods will allow you to design the system that works best for you. For me, right now, based on what I'm planning to grow, the fan and the ducting on the outside is the best way to go. And the fan is on and operating right now. You might be able to hear it in the background. It's not even turned up about a third of its potential at this point, and it's drawing a pretty good amount of air. And so how long will I actually run this fan? Well, I'm not planning on running it 24 hours. If this tent is filled with plants, I might consider that. But remember, one of those factors of why we're ventilating is because of the heat buildup. And the light is not going to be on for 24 hours. So I'll put the fan on a timer. It'll turn off shortly after the lights turn off. And it'll turn on shortly before the lights turn on. So I'll have pretty good airflow over the course of 24 hours, but I have the opportunity to save a few pennies of electricity cost by not running it full time. If I decide to change this system in the future, it's really easy. I just add straps or move them around, add the components and move the components as I see fit. I'm gonna try it this way. I anticipate it's going to work and I'll let you know in the future if there's any changes and indeed how successful my growing is. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.